Welcome to Arsenal Fan Circle, everybody. It's the Sunday show. It's Alonzo and myself in here. Uh, Paul Butcher, you're all welcome. And we're having a pretty good weekend. Uh, you know, it's 31st uh, match week. And Manchester City took care of business, unfortunately, against City, against Palace in the end. Arsenal, we'll be talking about Arsenal here, Alonzo. They really took care of business yesterday. And we were holding on to that top spot uh, overnight, top of the league. We are top of the league. Well, I suppose we'll dive into the events at Old Trafford first and foremost. Uh, one of the three away teams, Man City, Arsenal, or Liverpool, had to drop points somewhere along the line. And Manchester United have come up with a performance. Well, I think it's a little bit Liverpool have shot themselves in the foot today. I don't know if you saw... Uh, any of the game, Alonzo, but you might have caught up on highlights or whatnot. I did not. I watched WrestleMania again. Um, but yeah, I saw how there's a tweet that I saw the picture of, I believe mean, it was uh, Harvey Elliott kind of diving, and that's how he won the penalty prize. So, you know, it's, it's just that's one thing about the game I don't like is when people don't look at what happened, therefore they just assume. That he, do, that he got fouled when he clearly did not. So that's the only part I saw. I, I don't really watch no other games unless it's a game before Arsenal play, really. Um, I just watch Arsenal. And, but I saw the score. I was like, man, you know, I hope, I hope you know, you hold on. Um, Liverpool, I guess, got a penalty after, after that happens. So it was a draw. But it's just the same that we couldn't get they didn't, they didn't lose, whereas they got have a huge gap, but I'll take the draw, I guess. Yeah. Um, United have not, haven't had the greatest of seasons, uh, according to not, and not their fans and anything otherwise, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, we're top of the league, and that's how it matters right now. Yeah, we are top of the league. We are top of the league. We are top of the league. We are top of the league, says Stephen and all Arsenal fans out there. And so I have to, I have to say... Yes, whilst um, Harvey Elliott dragged his foot into the defender, the defender really shouldn't be diving and lunging for the ball at that point as well. So I I could see where they would give it as a penalty as well, Alonso. So I'm just happy they're taking the debate away from Gabriel Jesus yesterday and putting it on to uh, Harvey Elliott today. You know, the media move on pretty quickly, don't they? Yeah, and like I saw the game, I guess I saw a little bit of the game, rewatched a little bit of it, and it seemed like that tackle that Tariq um, Lam 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 yeah. uh got on Jesus was kind of valid, I guess. Um, he did put a foot in um, and took Jesus. So that play, for me, in my opinion, was warranted, uh, though. That's just to me. I kind of thought that was a dive with Harvey Elliott, but again, they're going to yeah, try to compare yeah. it to. Yeah, and that's that's the beauty of football. We're never all going to agree on the situation. You know what I mean? And it is a little bit uh, subjective and how you're going to feel about it. Um, the referee today. We'll get into Brighton a little bit later, but we will stay on Liverpool and. Uh, Man United just for now. Um, Stephen said, hey, everyone, I hope you're all great. Lots of joyful fist pumping around my house this weekend. Yeah, I dared to I dared to believe in Man United and Alonso, the, the defeat and the circumstances of the defeat against Chelsea uh, midweek led me to believe that Man United fans could turn up and expect their team to put in a performance against their rivals, Liverpool. Yeah, it seems like you know they, they turn up against Liverpool um, most of the time, at least. Um, I think this is a game that they always have on the official list as a potential win or at least draw uh, because they're going to lay, lay, lay it out there for uh, the team and their fans and their manager. Um, but, you know, in a way, you know, um, we Arsenal fans can only hope that Liverpool lose, but they drew. And it kind of shows you that 
Liverpool aren't as strong as years past as where they could they should have beaten a weaker United team and they didn't take advantage of that. So um, it's one of those, those things that I talked to Tom about that the United fans and their pundits or their ex-players view Arsenal and Liverpool as their biggest rivals instead of City. Um, because it seems like they, they go in their past a lot as far as regards to Arsenal and disregard City as their main rival. That's just how I see it. I don't know about you, Ray. No, definitely we'll get into that. I have it in my na- in my notes here, Alonzo. The Arsenal hate is real, you know, in the media and amongst the pundits as well. And there's a little bit of Manchester City, relatively Manchester City are the new kids on the block and that they have been um, – Gaining the grace of rival fans just because of tribalism uh, within within the English game, which you know is is a thing because Liverpool United have been ahead as the two traditional clubs winning a lot of the time, and Arsenal had Arsenal are still the third most successful club in England, and so there will be that rivalry between the three of us. Uh, Chelsea is is kind of newer on the block, and uh, Tottenham have always been. Uh, sure. There or thereabouts as the auto runs, Alonso. And right now, I'm keeping an eye on that Tottenham game. It's 1 <laughs> 1. Tottenham Forest have gone to Tottenham with 1 1. So, listen, um, let's get in. Let's, we'll linger on this a little bit more. Yes, Liverpool have shown some cracks today. And um, I just saw a Fabrizio Romano tweet uh, recently where Klopp was quoted as saying, Arsenal are a good team. And if they go to Old Trafford, which they will on May 11th, I think it is, uh, and play this same Man United team, they will win. So he was probably very disparaging against his own team. Jurgen Klopp um, losing it. You have to check up on those highlights, Alonso, and you'll see Jurgen Klopp losing it a little bit on the sideline. And I think it's a little bit Tottenham have just taken the lead, uh, 2-1. Yeah. But that's they're playing on the forest, they're expected to beat them. Um, it's a little bit like Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp, they they had the chances in the first half and they missed the chances. And I think, as a manager on the sideline, if you know your team is not quite up to snuff and not quite going to be good enough, um, you lose it a little bit on the sidelines. And you know, in previous seasons with Mikel Arteta. Minus a Havertz, minus a Declan Rice, and my minus a David Raya, uh, we weren't quite good enough to get over the line. So Michael Arteta in previous years had some flash points on the sidelines, but right now, um, and subject to BX's comment here, right now I think we have this solid base behind us, Alonzo, that we feel we can control games. Our XG is is crazy, both for and against, and uh, we've only conceded four goals all season. Uh, we're piling up clean sheets like they're going out of business. And I was looking at since the 2024 Liverpool, only two clean sheets from Liverpool, 12 goals conceded in 11 games, and even Manchester City have conceded 10 goals in 12 ga- games, Alonso. So. Since uh, 2024, all of the uh, the metrics, all of the factors have pointed towards Arsenal uh, being better, scoring goals, being better, uh, conceding the least amount of goals. So all of those factors could point us in the right in the direction of a title, Alonso. Yeah, and it's quite it's quite interesting, right? Because before when the season started, uh, we were winning games two one zero or two zero or we were yep. having trouble scoring goals yep. um, to start the season off. And uh, lately here, we've been beating teams, you know. Handily. 6-0, 3-0, 4-0. Yep, 3-1. Any, any high combination of goals, 3-0 against um, Bright Brighton yesterday as well. So, yeah, we're both watching maybe the same game here, but 2-1. Right. Right. Um, we'll be right back, we'll be right back Ray. Yeah, no problem. BX right. said, come on, you gunners. There we begin to believe Lady Luck is on our side, and this could be the year. Um, the thing about that is, B 
BX. Uh, let's let's just uh, pump the brakes slightly. I have said Arsenal. I have all of the great, all of the best metrics going forward. The best defense in the league. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about those players, uh, Saliba and Gabriel. Uh, the best attack going forward. We're going to mention all of our players doing that, scoring goals left, right, and center. All of our goals are not coming through one player, as you would expect, maybe a um, Man City uh, with a Holland. So we need to keep taking it one game at a time, BX Gunner. Uh, but Lady Luck is on our side so far. What we needed was Liverpool to drop some points so that it would be back in our own hands. And right now it's in our own hands with seven games to go. Now that's going to represent a certain amount of pressure, but this team has seemed to be able to deal with that uh, right up until this, this 31st game. And we are more mature uh, than we were last year as well. So everything's pointed in the right direction for me. Now, do we have to go to uh, places like Tottenham and Manchester United? There's tough games ahead. We have to play Chelsea at home, uh, who won today, I believe. Yes, we have to do all of those things, but we have seven cup finals, and I think we can all look at those each of those seven games and say, just keep winning. Just keep winning games. It doesn't care. It doesn't matter now, really, how many goals we score. Uh, albeit Man City and Liverpool would be going crazy trying to close that goal difference down. Um, BX, exactly. Let's win the league at Old Trafford. I wanted Manchester United to put in a performance against Liverpool today and see where their season finishes with them. Now, they're, they're obviously and probably going to beat Coventry City in the FA Cup semifinal, and that will keep some of their players interested in being available for the final um uh, being on in the first team first 11 picked for that final um and that will allow them maybe to take their eye off some of the league games uh toward the end so we'll see what happens uh manchester united may be in a position uh where their um season sort of slows down you know what I mean? And we might catch them at the end of the season. And I've said all, all this season, I've said, if um, Arsenal fans would would have taken this at the beginning of the season, we got Old Trafford needing a win uh, to win the league. Give me one game to win the league, and that would be at Old Trafford. And I would, I would, I would have accepted that at the beginning of the season. I would go through a 38-game season and for it to be decided at Old Trafford uh, where we could control the game, hopefully, a lot better than Liverpool did um, today. Yes, it could be our year, but with two teams chasing us, we can't take anything for granted. Um, easy to forget about Man City with Liverpool playing today and with Arsenal getting the result that they got yesterday. But make no mistake about it, um, that tactical and pragmatic draw at the Emirates will probably, right now we can see the benefit to it, that we are still ahead of Man City. Um, feel a lot different if we were chasing Man City with six or seven games to go. So we will have to keep step with Man City and keep one step ahead of them. And we kind of lose sight of Man City there they will be there or thereabouts, and it's going to go to the last weekend. But that tactical draw at Manchester, where a lot of our rivals uh, criticized us for supposedly parking the bus, but we had actual chances uh, to go and win that game at the Etihad. And I'd rather go to Manchester City and be defensively sound than go to Old Trafford, uh, draw 2 2, and look like the wheels are coming off because that's what that's what it looked like with Liverpool. Um, the Liverpool uh, goals conceded. Uh, Kwanzaa trying a back pass. I don't know if you saw the goals, Alonso. Uh, Kwanzaa squaring the ball across his back four and missing the defender. Uh, Fernandez, Bruno Fernandez jumping on it with uh, 50, 40 yards out. Uh, the goalkeeper, Creeving Kelleher, off his line. And Fernandez taking that shot. A really, 
a really excellent piece of skill from Bruno Fernandes and probably one of the only United players that could have done that. You know what I mean? And then uh, <laughs> Kobe, Kobe Manu um, scoring a great curling shot to put them 2-1 up, and we know what happened. Um, not really. I am not devastated. This face will not tell you it's devastated right now. Ray seems devastated. I have Liverpool dropped points today. I am I am happy, happy with that one, Ready. Uh, evening all, another excellent weekend for us. Keep these rolling. And now we want to look at City. City's got some difficult um, fixtures as well coming up. I think there's seven games left. Uh, here's the interesting part, Alonso. Seven games left. Liverpool have only two home games left. And... <laughs> So they have to play now. They have to play four. I think it's four or five. Four. They have three home games and four away now. Liverpool do. Uh, the same thing with City. City have three home games and four away. I'm making a case, Alonso. And Arsenal have three away games and four home. So advantage uh -huh. to us in terms of the home games. Um, big up, ready for being in here, and all of you for joining us today. <laughs> to you know celebrate a little bit in the demise of Liverpool and Liverpool um shooting themselves in the foot. Tony Turner said happy birthday Gary. Uh I believe Gary's in the chat box as well. He said hello hello Alonzo. Um jokes aside I didn't expect United to get anything today. Definitely uh that's really that's why we play the game right I think all <laughs> I think all three teams will drop points. The league is too good. It's just a matter of timing, limiting the damage like Liverpool did today. They dropped two points instead of three. But I think, Stephen, they will feel like that's a loss today. You know what I mean? Alonso? Yeah, I sorry I had to cut out right. Uh, Mark, you're interviewing Mark and Trip Sr. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, I think, like you said, how, you know, any given Sunday, Saturday, and Monday, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they could, <laughs> anyone can, anyone can lose. And, you know, like BX mentioned, uh, you know, Spurs could drop point, could gain points on City. Um, those, those kind of games, you know, it depends on the team that are for it. And certainly in the past, you've seen Spurs compete really well against City. I can't stand them. But they do have a solid, and they'll mm -hmm. still be a crap team, right? But you know, it it, it, it sucks having to turn your rivals to beat a team that's they're chasing or they're chasing us. So, uh, it's tough. It's a tough circumstance. It's like almost saying if oh Liverpool want you know United to beat Arsenal, uh, who do you go for, right? So. At the end of the day, you know, it's, we're going to have to uh, follow our tongues a little bit and hope that our rivals can be our other rivals, right? Which is stupid, but we never thought we'd ever say that or had to say that. But we had to just uh, do our, our, have to do our, our own business and continue to win. So we don't have to depend on them uh, to do the job for us. So, you know, either way you look at it, it's going to be a tough stretch. Um, like you had Liverpool draw against Man United, they dropped points. We dropped points against City, but maybe the fact that you know, City, the Eddie had a, is a tough place to play. Yep. Um, yeah. You're gonna have those games where you're gonna have to go to the tough places to win. And even a draw, um, where I think we had the slim, slim edge because we have more home games in a way, like you mentioned. Hmm. Um, so it looks like City and Liverpool had the most. Uh, the toughest role to an entire tarot and Arsenal do to an extent. Yeah, it's really tricky to know because I think somebody said that I think BX said there we start believing. It's really tough to know because you know you would think we with the seven games we have four of them at home we have to get, get maximum four wins and then the tricky ones are Wolves away, Tottenham away, and Manchester United away from home. And these are the three fixtures that probably stand in the way of us coming second 
or winning the title for, for the first time in 20 years. Now, Liverpool and City, they have to overcome the away games, having more away games as well. And uh, obviously, we've seen Liverpool, they've had well, they had three home games and five away coming into this, and they have just um, dropped points against Manchester United. And look, we'll have to go there at the end of the season. But if you if you would have told me at the beginning of the season, go you were going to go to the end of the season, be top of the league, and you have to win at Old Trafford to basically wrap up the title because I believe the last games of the season, all three teams will win the last game of the season. So whilst the league title will not be won at Old Trafford, Technically, it could be one at Old Trafford because Arsenal should beat Everton at home. City should beat their team. I think it's Wolves or I think it's um, West Ham they're playing at home and Liverpool are playing Wolves at home. So very disappointed for Liverpool, but we move on. Nigel, I, the thing about Liverpool's season is they've only lost two games, one of them to us in the league where I think it was a very important Obviously, a very huge game in the title race when we beat you. But you've drawn too many games, and City have drawn a lot of games as well. And you've had too many five-on-ones and five-on-twos where you didn't seal the deal and you weren't clinical enough. And in this Premier League, you've got to be clinical. And Arsenal are emptying stadiums everywhere they go. And uh, uh, I was singing the uh, the Havertz song yesterday as well. Waka Waka. We'll get to that. Kai Havert scores again. Uh, Mo Salah should have been subbed off at halftime. He was fasting due to Ramadan. Yeah, definitely. But you, you're just you've been relying on Mo Salah all season, uh, much like Bakaya Saka. We've been relying on Bakaya Saka all season. But you need strikers. I believe Darwin Nunez, we're starting to see the fallibility in Darwin. He missed a clear-cut chance in the second half. And uh, Luis Diaz, not good enough. They don't score enough goals uh, to get you the points at critical points in the season. Uh, I expect us to drop points against either Spurs or United away. Or, ready, you could have chest and say, we're going to go there and we're going to win. Because... Spurs are not that good of a team, and a lot of teams have won there. I know it will be difficult on the night or the day, whenever it's going to be, Sunday evening. And United away from home. Again, you know, if if we if we can't beat Spurs away from home and United away from home the way we're playing right now, then frankly, we probably don't deserve to win the league because these are the fogging standards, Alonso. These are the fogging standards standards that we need to aspire to and city have pushed it that way hello hello gary good of you to join us thank hello, you hello. let's win the league at old trafford bx said um for that to happen city has to drop points which i don't see happening unfortunately yeah the city will you know we we, we are going to have to match what city do now or you know we're going to have to win think about winning at least six games and see where that takes us, you know, six out of seven. Uh, City will draw points to Spurs. We can't hang our hat on that. We cannot say that we will just wait till the last game of the season where I think it will probably be a rescheduled game in the midweek before the last game, Alonso, uh, when City will play Spurs. Alonso with the lap. City play Spurs last game of the season? Well, it can't technically be the last game of the season because the last game of the season has all has to be where all games are played simultaneously on the nineteenth of Sunday, the nineteenth of May. So it would have to be a, the Wednesday, Tuesday, or Wednesday before that game, you know, if it's going to get rescheduled. Which I hope it doesn't, because I'm tired of rescheduled games. Um, you know, it's the same. Oh, it's not the same, but. I kind of wish the Chelsea game was rescheduled that late in the season, but it is what it is. Um, you know, not every game is not easy, right? So we started mm -hmm. the uh, the give of that we lost to them in the early part of the year, so we have that going for us as well. So there's a lot of games that 
we 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 need to have revenge on, and as we are one of those teams that beat us, beat Arsenal rather. Um, so you know, I was talking to a Liverpool fan who was a customer of mine at at work, and we were talking about the winning games they have, and they're saying that the, the Everton, mm-hmm. no matter how bad they are, they always turn up for yep. that Rose High Derby. So there's a other a game that to watch out for, and yep. they're better than than that their record indicates, right? Because they got those those points deducted and. And all that, so they're not that bad. They're better than last year. Uh, yeah. So you know, they never know those games how good they can go. So they're good. They like say you have tricky games uh, as well. Like you know what? They Alonso, they have to play like you said, Everton, which is a Merseyside derby, and it's not going to be easy at their place. They have to play Fulham, which we lost. We lost to Fulham at their place. They have to go to West Ham as well. And um, there's another team as well. They have to play Villa. They have to play Aston Villa, who could, who probably could and should be fighting for top four at that point, trying to seal the deal. So Liverpool could drop a number of points between now and the end of the season. And would, would we be <clears> calling it <throat> bottling the league at that point then? You know what I mean? Yeah, because I know I saw a tweet earlier about, you know, Arsenal bottling league as well. Um it's it's. I don't think Jurgen Klopp has ever been at situation where he's bought a league. Um, so it's up to his players really if they want to play for him in his last season. Um, though, you know, you could say, well, Arteta is a from our Everton player, and they might, you know, want to play better because they want him to win the league. Who knows? I'm just thinking about ideas, but. You know, it's it's quite interesting because it seems like you know today's the Aaron Klopp looks at this draw as a loss, really, because he seems he, he sounds defeated from what I gathered. Yeah, and yeah. you know how 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 bad would it be if they bought the ball league rather, and it'd be Klopp's last year as manager for Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, so, I look. Sorry, Alonso. They they could have won the game at halftime. They had thirteen shots on goal in the first half alone. You know, so they've only got themselves to blame. Only being one nil up, um, having dominated the first half. Yeah, I always knew the home team always comes into it at some point. I always knew Manchester United have certain qualities that they would come out in the second half and at least have a spell. You know what I mean? The home team will have a spell. Unless it's Arsenal. The way Arsenal have been playing lately, uh, and we'll talk about Brighton. Uh, Brighton have only lost once all season as well. Nigel said, no Liverpool fans are happy today reading the fan channel post. Exactly. I mean, they needed to go and extract revenge. They needed to win. At this point in the season, you can do this in October and November. You can drop a point in October and November, and it's not critical. But you mm-hmm. need to be uh, foot perfect in the last uh, six or seven games of the run in, and we we experienced that last season. Um, this this fixture last year was the two two draw at uh, West Ham, and uh, you know we were uh, in free fall at that point in time. Don Juan, hello lads, long time no see. Good to see you, Don Juan. Apparently, Sheffield United have equalised. It's uh, Desmond. 2-2 over there with Chelsea as well. Um, Don Juan said Liverpool play chaos football. They have no control in, in games. And look, I said it very early in the season, and Liverpool, to their credit, have surprised me that they've gotten this far. But when a player of Caicedo's quality on the final day of the transfer window leaves Liverpool and goes to, goes to London, um, and you only pick up a player like Endo, you're going to get found out in the bigger games. Um, Liverpool had 10 clear-cut chances and should have won. Too bad for them, indeed. Uh, Did Sheffield United score? Yep, 2-2. Oh, my God, Chelsea fans are losing their minds online. So, you know, it's a real good feel, Alonso, when you're a team. You can put that – well, I always have pride in this shirt. I always wear it, but you can wear it now, and, you know, people are saying, that's Arsenal. And they're top of the league, and they're pretty good, right? 
Yeah, I mean, it shows you how much faith, you know, our, uh, the cronk cronkies. What are you trying to say, cronks? The cron chronicies. Chronic. The chronicies, like the, the chronicles. chronicles. <laughs> Jesus, man. Udagor, we have Udagor too. Um, the cron chronicies, right. So it kind of shows you how the chronicies had, you know, faith in Arteta, due to the fact that, you know, he was still very young whenever he came about um, with Arsenal. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, from going from eighth to fifth to second to now, hopefully winning the league this year, mm -hmm. there's going to be some, some not failures, but some bumps in the road, right? Yeah. And with them, it, we, we haven't gone through this in a very long time. And we had hopes, and you know, Emery, it didn't work out. Um, I'm sure Tony has a more elaborate reason why. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> then we had to trust Arteta because you're seeing now in English football how quickly teams can get rid of coaches. Yeah. Out of a, uh, Chelsea. And, yeah. but you got to stick with your manager, you know, thick and thin. You know, even you have to overspend to get players that you really want. You know, we, during Ringer, you know, we had to settle for third or fourth choice. Well, Arteta wants the first choice. And we got that player in Bacon Rice. Exactly. Uh, some, some fans may not agree with that, Tony. Um, but, you know, you got you to spend, you got to overspend sometimes, especially nowadays. Um, oh, yeah. They may yeah, hurt. But he at the end of the day, they rolled it. Yeah, because he was saying, I'd rather not spend $105 million, I'd rather get three players for that. You know what I mean? And I'm sorry, $105 million, it was well spent. We're uh, not worth it. Declan, Declan Rice, Declan Rice, we got him for half price. Declan Rice, Declan Rice. <laughs> we got him for half the price. <laughs> and he didn't want to join City. He didn't want to join City because, yeah. you know, he didn't want to join... A, a team like the a, so the comparison here the states are you know man city and like the yankees they spend money out of control with the red sox and we overspend well we spend money but we're not going to be that team that's going to be under the radar with you know 115 counts of wrongdoing right yep. you, you yep. keep things good enough to where we don't have to be in that trouble we hope so we we hope our accountants we hope our accountants are keeping their books uh balanced but you know i believe arsenal are are the team who do things the right way we've always been that that club that do things the right way we've got a little bit of class about us and whilst class is uh they say class is permanent but the custodians of the club need to make it so that last is permanent. Um, here we are. So we got an eclipse coming tomorrow um, across the United States. Uh, heard, I'm sure everybody's heard about this eclipse, but right now Arsenal are eclipsing their rivals, and we are into our next phase of the. Uh, uh, we're into our next phase of the show, and Arsenal are into the next phase of their development, um, and that is. To have that swagger and confidence of a team that knows that they they can rock up to the Amex at Brighton and have that confidence to go and get that win, because now we are in the uh, critical stages of the uh, Premier League where we have seven or eight games to go, and we have that confidence and control in games that just it just makes you feel, Lonzo, like we can win each and every game now. Yeah, and you know, last year was a was was not a wake up call, but reality checked in with our sets, right? So, you know, having Declan Rice and having a Partey's backup, having Jorginho play really well during the stretch is pretty has surprised me. Uh, even last year when we got him, uh, he he got some. He, he helps the team, I think, with his leadership. But I think you're showing even more now than you had, you know, before. Uh, having that 
extra, I guess, captain. Uh, and it really shows his worth. And I'm surprised that he's still playing at a high level. Um, so it was a good, uh, people may, have, may, may not have agreed with that signing, but Virginia has some really good class. Um, as far as Arteta maybe switching up the lineup a little bit with him playing number six and, and Declan Rice playing number eight and them switching off with each other, I think it, it paid off. Um, you had Partey in there as well playing there and, and, and Mr. Schroepan and other number eight. So you have death finally after a long, for after maybe what, two years. Um, and you have backups at the, at, and also the center backs as well. So everything's worked out so far um, to where you could put in any, any player and do a job for you. Um, yeah. And it's good to see in uh, Vieira back as well uh, yesterday. Yeah, and look, we we've gotten to this next phase of Arsenal. I'm, it may it may not be an official phase as uh, Mikel Arteta calls it, but um, for me, it's the phase of knowing you can um, you switch a player uh, in and out a little bit. Um, little, little, I had a little worry. You might have seen it, Alonso about Sinchenko playing a left back. Uh, I thought it took us about ten or fifteen minutes to figure that out, and. Mm closed down yeah. what was happening because we were getting um we were getting Brighton players running down uh, our left flank and Zinchenko and Gabriel under a, a little bit of pressure and facing a couple of shots. Yeah uh, I was on it's funny you say that because I was on Ryan's channel watching his podcast and watch along and I asked a question I said I asked is there is there an issue or does Zinchenko being in midfield to cause an issue because it comes in clustered in midfield position because we're getting beat at the midfield area where Brighton were at the time, you know, picking our butts at midfield. Yeah. And right as soon as he answered that question, he didn't switch on. He was just too hesitatical, being lazy, not defending properly. Yeah. And, you know, we're, they were saying, at what point does Zinchenko go off? Because he still doesn't get it, man. He still doesn't get it. And people will write the narrative that he's a midfielder. Well, mm-hmm. we're under a pitch that defends. Arteta has the pain left back for a reason. Yep. So it depends. He was watching the ball, right? On that side of the pitch. Watching the ball. Well, he watching. Was the yep. he was watching, right? Exactly. Yeah, and so, that's and you can switch off, right, Alonso? Yeah, this is exactly why you know Kubiar has played so well. Yep. Then you bench him. Yeah, that, that's the part I understand about Arteta. And look, and look, uh, listen. Some people will be listening to this and saying, "What? What are we? Compl- we're not. Why are we highlighting this? We won the game at Brighton away from home, and Brighton have only been beaten once at home by West Ham. We highlighted that on Thursday night. I'm saying this because." In this run-in, you can't even so much as go a goal behind anymore, Alonzo, because you go a goal behind, you need to then score two goals and it becomes difficult. And we saw we saw what happened with Manchester United. They went a goal behind at Old Trafford. And then you get out of you, – you become a team that you're really not – you're not built to do this. And Arsenal are built now to win with a lead. Uh, to build up lead and not to give away that goal. And we're highlighting this because we want to see something more solid at the back, a Kivi or, or a, um, a um, what's the other player, Tommy Asu in there. You know what I mean? To have more defensive abilities and to be able to keep that clean sheet that we've had 2024. Yeah, and in a way, it's funny. It's not, it's not funny, but interesting how, People will say, well, you know, Zinchenko and Jesus helped us get there. Yes. And I don't buy that still. Um, they helped us to get to this point, right? But will they get um, us over the line? You know what I mean? This should, this should have been it last year. Um, mm-hmm. but, but, you know, I, I was I was quite critical of Gabriel Megalash, Megalash, um because he wasn't focused, whatever. But looking back on it, I realized how... It was basically Zinchenko's fault that he was, yeah, you know, not focused enough. Being hung out to dry a little bit on that left yeah. side. You and know, so, you know, if anything, he hurt us 
because we drop points. Um, but that said, that, that, that's that, that's you know that's last year, but this year, you know, he's not played as much because he's I remember, hurt. I remember one up at uh, Anfield with Salah. Yeah, yeah. right. We all remember that. Yes. Yeah, that's where Zinchenko was uh, playing left back, and the ball was over his head. Salah gets onto it, and Gabriel Magalhaes couldn't get across up mm -hmm. at Anfield for Salah's equalizer. Again, again, Liverpool had a five on two or a five on one against Arsenal late in that game. They want, they always want to highlight the handball from Erdegaard, but I think Liverpool fans need to look at their own team and say they haven't been efficient enough in the big games to win the big games. And also, I look look at the game at first hand. You know, you got destroyed uh, with Jared Bowen, right? You destroyed him too. So, yeah. you know, it's something that Arteta has to look at. And in the future, I know some teams are, are rumored to be interested in Zinchenko. I have, I'll have him pack his bags. I will fly to London myself. To have him pack his bags. <laughs> I, I, think, I, I, I think he can be a good squad player, but let's not rely on him in the biggest games uh, away from home. Uh, where first, against, first, against, against, first against Brian Munich. No oh, yeah. problem, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and look, we, we're going to talk about Bayern Munich now because in a little bit because we we face up now into a Champions League. This this league position now that we're in, we can put that to bed for at least for one week until next Sunday. Aston Villa come rocking up. And quite happy to see as well, Alonso. Um, yesterday, Aston Villa and uh, Luis, Douglas Luis grabbing himself a yellow card. So... He will be unavailable next Sunday against Arsenal, and that's important at the uh, at the Emirates. So listen, we're gonna take we're gonna have to take this one game at a time. Um, we talked about Arteta needing to get it with Sinchenko, bring Kivior in, bring bring Tomiyasu in. We got a if we go to Old Trafford, we go to White Hart Lane or even Wolves with Sinchenko playing a left back. That represents a huge red flag for me. And we cannot just have uh, Zinchenko in the in the left back position for those three away games. Zinni will take over El Nani's long standing role. Maybe it's got to be a midfield though. BX right and more, Russ is in the house. Evening chaps. We hope uh, Una Emery can have an impact um, for against Liverpool toward the end of the season. I have, I have a question. I have a question for Russ. He hey Russ, who who who, order, who orders guys? Who orders the ice? No, who are who are those guys? Who are yeah? Who are those eagles, Russ? Who are they? <laughs> he got an answer. He got an answer. Um. So yeah, do you, do you think Arteta has learned some lessons from last season, Alonso? Yeah, don't start Zinchenko as much. <laughs> don't start Zinchenko Zinchenko as much. A hundred percent. Also. Don't start the season like you're on fire. We did that last season. We started like we were on fire. And uh, taking the workload of the Champions League group stages, winning the group, and sort of playing playing your season as it simmers to a boil uh, toward the end. And right now we're, we're simmering right now, Alonso. You know? And I think Mikel Arteta just looked at that last summer when he had all that time on the beach. Um, and thinking about the mistakes that were made, and we started to cook now in 2024. Yeah, I think you know he's made some good changes. Like he's starting to rest in Saka a little bit, a little bit more, slowly but surely. Uh, mm -hmm. He's he's changed uh, Havertz's position to number eight, from number eight to starting striker position. Yep. Uh, he's put Jesus at the wing now. Um, he's slowly starting his injured players from starting so much to now on a bench and still slowly start integrating them back on the team. Um, he hasn't he hasn't rotated Saliba or Gabriel because they're very important mm -hmm. role for us. Yeah, yeah. So he hasn't really stopped them from sitting down. Um, so here, here we are starting to play a little bit more, and he's starting to trust him more. 
Yeah. Um, he's starting to slowly give his bench more opportunities, and it's paid off. Yeah. Uh, I, um, I think I think you know Tuesday, Memphis had a great game, and hopefully it's not the last time we see him starting. Yeah. Um, so we've seen the players make a difference more uh, off the bench. Um, but it, it all took time. Um, so from here on out, you're going to see more of that happening. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. Really am. Yeah, I mean, I like I said, this is the next phase, Alonzo. And not relying on 12 or 13 players, but now we have Tommy Asu, a key viewer can come in. Thomas Partey is coming back. Hopefully he's going to help us more and more as this season gets to a crescendo in the next six weeks. Emil Smith-Rowe, like you just mentioned, starting the game against Luton Town and being not only starting the game, but being impactful and having a real part to play in both of the goals. We went 2-0. Uh, Fabio Vieira, maybe we need to see a little bit of him as well. It's not going to be easy to give him minutes. Leandro Trossard coming off the bench and scoring uh, an audacious goal right at the end. It's very nice for Leandro to do that. I think he was getting booed from some of the Brighton fans, but you got to mm-hmm. understand he had had a dispute with uh, the Zerbi and wanted out. And look, you can't blame a player for wanting to go to one of the top six teams. I think we want to have a little bit of a chat a little bit later about the top six teams as well. Uh, I know Tom talks about this a lot and i think there is something to it as well um the other thing as well was uh martinelli coming back on the right side getting a few more minutes i don't think martinelli's ready to play a full game but i think the last two or three games he's come off the bench and played down that right side so i think there's a conscious effort alonzo that we're looking at martinelli maybe through the middle or that inside right channel yeah, I mean, uh, like I told you earlier before, um, and Stan maybe had uh, an agreement or such like that, but I would not mind seeing Marshmallow up the middle, down the middle, um, because yeah. he 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 has the opportunity to start across all three positions. I mean, he's that good. I was hard. I remember his first goal was not when his first goal was against Chelsea. Uh, and he had a lot of pace during that game, yeah. and uh, he scored yeah. down the middle. Um, yeah. So he has that capability of doing so. Um, and we, he scored uh, in the middle. Uh, he scored through the middle uh, a few other times as well. So I want to see more of that. And whether or not Arteta would do that, it's up to him. Um, but Martina has the capability of doing so. Um, Yeah, we want to see what Martinelli can do for us as well. We, it, it's like when you have a car and now you got all these bells and whistles on your car. You want to take it out on the road, open it out on the on the on the motorway, and see what it can do. Listen, um, this, this is all of these W's in this last eleven games here. Uh, eight W's leading up to the uh, at the ad. We got a very pragmatic draw. We did not park the bus, but we got a vital point. The same point that Liverpool got there. Um, we is whether you draw with nil nil or one one, it still means you get one point, and then we followed up with two wins here against Luton Town and during midweek, and this win against Brighton. Which, uh, look, a lot of us were, um, not co- some of us were not confident that we would go to Brighton and win, some of us looked at Brighton's t- uh, home record and said. They've only lost once away from home. Maybe a draw is going to come our way, but we absolutely control this game. So all of these Ws, 10 Ws and 1 D, uh, gives you uh, 31 points out of 33. And that has forced cracks out of um, uh, Liverpool today. And we have seen it in a very visceral way um, at Old Trafford. And, you know, Man City are there. Man City have picked up the pace as well. Um, but for us to stay ahead of Man City, I think we're going to look back at that nil-nil draw at the Etihad and maybe say that was the key to uh, winning the league. I hope I'm right and not jumping the gun too much on this one. Um, but yeah, uh, those those wins uh, have forced Liverpool. We've 
we've overcome that five point deficit at the beginning of the, of this year in 2024. Um, Liverpool have dropped points at Old Trafford today and at Anfield versus City, and they have dropped points against Arsenal at the Emirates. So that that's kind of we turned it around that we we had to do it, Alonso, just by. The only way we could do it was by winning 10 games in a row and one draw. And I'll tell you what, Alonso, if Man City was doing that, the media would be talking about it. If Man City had won 10 games and drawn one, uh, the, 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 uh, the, all of the celebrities like uh, the Carragers and the Nevilles would be talking about it. Here they go again. But I'm actually quite happy, Alonso, because um, these media personalities continue to dismiss Arsenal. They said at, at first Arsenal would fall away. Now they're saying Arsenal will drop points somewhere in these seven games. Let them keep disregarding us. us you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm okay with it because, you know, it's kind of weird how they, they can't appreciate it because they're still bitter about what happened uh, you know, 20 years ago. <laughs> in their careers. Ago. Yeah. yeah, Jamie Carragher getting um, blown by, you know, Henri blown by Jamie Carragher, you know. Yeah, and, and, and you know, ha having, you know, uh, that punk, uh, Roy Kane, you know, having, uh, you know, better being better about the 2005 FA Cup final. Um, <laughs> so, you know, there's all kind of thoughts and stories on why uh, these husbands have been talking about Arsenal. Yeah. Um, even you know Stephen Nichol, uh, the, the even more better. Nineteen eighty nine. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's just it's a joke, man. Because like that show on uh, ESPN FC, trash, man. Yeah, ESPN FC. Chuck at his thought. Yeah, here with that man. He's another one as well. Um, yeah. yeah, listen a little bit more about this lineup yesterday. Uh, Martinelli couldn't go, so was, uh, Gabriel Jesus playing on the left. Um, you know. You wonder if it's going to be Trossard on the left or Jesus, and Jesus found his way onto the lineup. Which, hey man, you know, all he could do now is just win his penalties. Yeah. And take naps on the ground. Let's talk, that... Yeah, let's talk about that penalty. How how can anyone say that that was not a penalty? There, even Lee Dixon. Were you? Did you have the same feed I had? Lee yeah. Dixon. Lee Dixon trying to to. Pretend he's not an Arsenal uh, employee or an Arsenal fan. Why? Why do our Arsenal legends have to pretend that they're? You know, you see Carragher, you see Neville doing it. Why can't Lee Dixon do it? Because he tries to be. He, he tries to. <laughs> he <laughs> objective. Uh, uh, yeah, right. He tries to like that technique because. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I know, but I mean, hundred percent penalty, Alonzo. Hundred percent. Yeah, I mean Lee Dixon. You know, he he. I I like Lee Dixon. He he's a good pundit. I I think he tries to play it calm. He tries to play it. He tries not to have any um. Bias. Bias, yeah. But it's so it's so hard in his position, you know. So he he. <laughs> he tries his best oh, not to. He doesn't want. He doesn't want to go full Neville or full Carragher. Right. That's what it is. You know. What I mean? play to him, you know. Um. But you know, he, 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 he's he's just incredible. I, it's I, annoying, I incredibly annoying though, as well, Alonzo. Incredibly annoying, annoying. Yeah, because I remember. Um, I don't remember this way, but he's like Ben White. You better win that call, man. That I can understand because Ben White shouldn't have. Shouldn't have made extra, you know. Yeah. He shouldn't made it extra, as they yeah. say. Do you know um, what? So, gonna, you know what's going to happen with that Alonzo? Referees are going to start seeing that, and he's going to yeah. start get, getting bookings if he's not careful. You know what I mean? He got one actually in this game for just kicking the ball away, which you know you're going to get that every time. BX said Dixon, LOL. They kill me with how biased they are. You know, they he tries to be like. Oh, I don't think that was a penalty. I don't care if the ball nicks, if it's deflected off the person's foot. Lamptey went full in, and Jesus had, had moved the ball, shifted the ball inside, and Lamptey followed through and caught his leg in a violent action inside the box. So 
there's no not even a debate and of course yesterday our rival fans and our rival pundits like tried to make uh fill their agendas with not a penalty but of course it was a hundred percent stone cold steve austin penalty if you're if you know what i mean um I and then we had uh Erdegaard or Saka. What were you thinking? Who's gonna who's gonna take this penalty? Um yeah, um I thought it would be Saka because he's been that good at taking them and can handle now the pressure of taking a penalty. So he's done pretty well this year. Yeah, super uh ice through his veins, dispatched that penalty with no no issues at all. Uh one nil to the arsenal. Um, Saka now on 14 goals and eight assists. Alonso, I'm gonna set a little marker, I'm gonna set a little, um, a little task for Bakaya Saka with seven games remaining. I'm gonna ask him to hit 20 for the season in the league. Yeah, I mean, he he's more than capable of doing so, right? I think, you know, he's gotten really better at attacking that, that right side. I think that, you know, Grant, you know, he didn't have a great game against City. Um, but the defendings were pretty good themselves last Sunday. So, you know, moving forward, you know, I think Saka is an important part of this team. I, I still think that the team uh, goes to him. Uh, he, he's not going to have the greatest days, but sometimes not all great players do. Yeah. Um, so, Well, Salah think, didn't have a great day today either. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, sometimes we have our old friend Brownie comparing him to, to uh, Bowen, which is stupid to me uh, yeah. because they're both different players. They're both yeah. Arsenal just on well, really, really uh, have far away a better team than West Ham. So at that point, that being said, you know, I think Saka is on his way to doing some great, great things. Um, and, but you're not surprised if he gets 20 goals. Yeah, he's going to – I mean, he's going to be compared to Foden at Manchester City, and he's going to be compared to Mo Salah at Liverpool. Now, I know there's an age difference between Mo Salah and him, but he needs to start getting on those levels of scoring 20 goals each and every season, which Mo Salah has done, and then we can have the conversation. But let's start. It's very attainable with seven games left. Uh, you're six goals away, Bakaya. Uh, let's see if you can get those six goals in the seven games. Uh, it just means you you get a brace here and there or you score in every game um, right now up until the end of the season. And we have a goal fest at, at the home game at Everton as well. Um, the other thing as well, uh, Bikai Saka had a number of chances in, in the earlier part of, parts of this game, Alonso as well. Um, the one where Ben White cut inside uh, infield a little bit, then he passed a through ball to Bagaya Saka, and Saka's through on the inside right channel, uh, bearing down on goal. He's able to cut back and cut inside the Brighton defender. But I'm expecting the net to bulge at that point, and it just just goes wide of the post. Yeah, you know, and and Dan White has a knack of getting inside the box and either assisting or getting a second assist, and he's done that pretty well since he's been at right back. Um, Mikhail Saka is not going to get every goal. He's not going to hit every post. Yeah. Um, but when he does, he seems to have a good day. Um, it's just unlucky there. Um, I think sometimes players can do too much and not see other players on the side of them or in front of them so they, they, they get the pass yeah. off and shut off. But Right. Yeah, you know, sometimes it happens like that, and you know, sure. unfortunately, having for the cows happen. Yeah, and we had, we had the same thing in Man City with uh, Leandro Trossard on the left wing in the 86th minute. We know that at Man City, he has the capability of seeing Martinelli going through the center and being able to pick him out. But at, at times, the player who has the ball needs to see the player who's running into space, and it needs to happen at the same time to be able to engineer that pass across um, to um, Marinelli. So, yeah, that's Bukayo Saka. Um, right, right from the beginning, and going back to the first minute here, 
we had that rehearsed free kick with Gabriel Magalhaes just missing uh, mm. the goal as well. Uh, I thought we were. I thought it was a good sign that we were going to be. We were determined to win the game today against Brighton, right from the first minute, Alonso. You know. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, you know, like I said before, right? Like our midfield looked kind of shaky there at some points in the game because Brighton had a lot of speed there, um, and they they attacked really well. Um, so at some points in that game, they. Uh, Murfield was like not 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 up for it, it seemed like. But then as the game as the game went on, uh you could tell that they were up for it just a little bit, little bit longer because Brighton are are still a good team despite their injuries. And at any given moment, you know, like I said on um the podcast I mentioned a podcast somewhere where Hmm. Playing Brighton at home is always a tough place to play because you know you know we're going to get out of that bunch there. Hmm. Um, with that said, you know the midfield played decent enough where they could get a goal out of nowhere, and no matter how old Dan Roback is, they could still get some goals in as well. Um, so we struggled at the at some parts of the game because Inchenko would get with inverts and midfield and all that. So it was clustered at some points, um, but right in, they attacked pretty well. Um, and they got a shot off, I think, at some points of the game as well. Yeah. Um, so you were, so it was nervous. It was nervy there for a couple of minutes. Yeah, I think we've gotten used to a, a very high level of security with Arsenal playing um, with with the control that we have in midfield. We, we've gone... Get this, Alonso, and it, and it pertains to Brighton. <laughs> We've gone from Guendouzi and Bern Leno when we lost at uh, Brighton in 2020. You know, when Guendouzi and we lost at Brighton um, to a Mopé goal um, in deep in injury time, which was a very, very tough loss to take. We've gone from Guendouzi and Leno to Rice and Raya. Well, we also I had Kurt, Tony's Colonel Mustard, too. <laughs> yeah, we had those defenders too. We've gone from those defenders to a Gabriel Megalege and William Saliba. So every time, every time I ask, you know, who are these guys, I, I I come back to you know Luis Luis and uh, and, and Mustafi. David Luis and we. Who are these guys? I think I think uh, Russ is saying who are who are these guys? You know. Uh, Alonzo and Ray, you know us. You know us. Um, so, yeah, listen. The other thing I want to say, Alonzo, uh, Brighton last season was a microcosm of our season last season. So if you can cast your mind back to when we played Brighton uh, a year ago, we beat them 4-1 with that great pass from Erdegaard to Martinelli. Uh, we beat them 4-1. But then... When we come back, I think it was Mother's Day here early last year, and we lost um, 3 0 to Brighton. Uh, you look at the results against Brighton this season, we had a very, very good and controlled win against them at the Emirates. And yesterday, we had an even more controlled win uh, against Brighton away from home. So I thought it was uh, the parallel between Brighton. The two teams, the two games we played against Brighton this year versus the two games against Brighton last year has been a huge clue to our season and the differences between last year and this year. I think we're the real deal. We are the real deal um, this season. And with seven games to go, uh, you've got to have a little bit of faith, as, as Gary will say. And thanks, Gary. Have a good show. Enjoy. Happy birthday, Gary. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Man. Gaza, happy birthday. Um, I hope we do what Gary says. Do not waste the trip. Take Seize our advantage that we have right now, uh, but also go one game at a time and win it one game at a time. Uh, it's Lane Johnson and Jason Kelsey. Uh, you can throw in Granite, who in that list with Leno and company. Harsh, but true at the time. Uh, and I think Granite, we got the best out of uh, Granite Xhaka last season. 
through Mick Arteta coming to grips with him. And we're going to see Gran Xhaka possibly win the win the uh, Bundesliga. So close to it now with um, Xavi Alonso in Germany. You know, uh, I think there's something like three or four points away. Um, so yeah, we get in at halftime one nil. Uh, Alonso, I thought we had we had seven minutes of overtime, seven minutes of extra time in the first half, and I was I was hoping that we would you know be able to add to our advantage. We saw today at Liverpool, Liverpool one nil going in at halftime, and that's sometimes not always enough when you go away from home. That second goal is hugely important. We weren't able to get it in the first half, but by G O D, by God, Alonso, we got the second goal on 62 minutes uh, through Kai Havertz, 65 million. Waka Waka. Yeah, Waka Waka does it again, right? So, you know, it was a it was a good position uh, team goal. Uh, I thought that uh, Ben White and you know, Rice Udegaard, even Saka when he fell down. Yes. Um, made an impact Quite. on that goal. Um, <laughs> so, even Jorginho, like I said before, you know, he has a knack for contributing. Um, this time it was a short pass um, right on the edge of the line there and got it through to Kai Havertz. And the old Chelsea players got his second goal. Um, which, you know, is, is quality on Jorginho to play at number six to get that deep in uh, by, by Brighton's uh, end to, to assist uh, Kai Havertz there. And so we're lucky to have him, like I said before. And yeah. he's a very, still a very good player. Um, and the way he Arteta has introdu- introduced him to still an assortment 11 is pretty risky but pretty cool as well um because he didn't want to be in that he didn't no longer want to be at that mess at chelsea um mm-hmm. so at the time it, it made sense and it still makes sense um and we're lucky to have parte behind yeah yeah playing on the bench having him on the bench and we're going to open this up a little bit more to the to the the, all of the Chelsea team that got disintegrated a little bit and it's gone. Some of those Chelsea players have gone to various different teams. It does look from the outset that the players that we took from Chelsea uh, through their own demise in the Abr- Abramovich era, Abramovich era coming to an end, we were able to take some of their players and financial fair play. The things that Todd Bowley, the things that Todd Bowley were doing was doing was signing up these players on big contracts. That meant that they had to sell somebody like Kai Havertz. And look, I think you'd be hard pressed to find one Arsenal fan out there who knew from the start that Kai Havertz was going to be perfect for Arsenal. Because there's nobody can tell me that they knew it from the start that uh, we weren't going to be uh, spending 65 million. On, on a gem. He's, he's turning out to be a gem. Now, the thing about Jorginho, when we saw Bakaya Saka go down in that tackle and Erdegaard and White, I think Jorginho recognized, oh, Saka's on the ground. I need to cycle in there to be part of that triangle to work uh, that overload. And it turned out that Erdegaard was the player feeding a perfect ball from Erdegaard into Jorginho's path as well. And then Alonso, the movement from I watched the back. You watch that movement again. Havertz is going near post. Um, he's going to go to that side of the defender. Then he cuts back in between the two defenders and finds the perfect spot. And Jorginho's got a very small window to hit Havertz with. On the second goal, right? Second goal, yeah. Like, there's a very small window for Jorginho to find Kai Havertz in there. Yeah, and so you could tell whenever, you know, uh, Jorginho was calling for a ball, um, when he moved up and Udegaard, you know, had a good pass there. And, you know, it kind of shows you how, you know, the, the, the vision that Udegaard has as far as trying to pick in that players and, you know, Jorginho making that run uh, on the right side of the box. And, yeah. 
Timber told him he was ready to get to the assist uh, to Kai Havertz, was really special. Uh, you could tell it practiced that in training, um, and it worked out. And, you know, kind of seeing how Kai Havertz now is in the zone, and I'm sure we'll talk about the third goal, but kind of shows you how you know, Kai Havertz also played a lot of defensive as well, uh, as I saw earlier and, and even later on in the match. He was having out the defense. So you're seeing him doing all kinds of things, and now you're seeing him score that second goal, which, you know, at the beginning of the year, I worried about his pace a little bit because he was still trying to find his way. Yeah. And um, it, so far, it's worked out. And so you're seeing him now being that complete player that we all needed him to be. Yeah, killer Kai. Killer Kai. And in this situation with Bakai Saka being on the ground, Jorginho is in effect uh, Bukayo Saka. You know, Jorginho has taken the mantle of being that winger in this move because Bukayo Saka is sitting on the ground, laying down, injured, or you know, you know the way footballers are. They'll 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 go down as if they're hurt. They'll try to get a free. Of course, everybody does it. Uh, but then after a few minutes. They're back up on the field again and running around like Lewis Diaz today um, against uh, Manchester United. So, yeah, um, Kai Havertz. And, yeah, we're going to talk about that assist as well for the third goal. Um, Kai Havertz turning up for that second goal, scoring. All of, It's really important when you're away from home to get that second goal and to give yourself that breathing room. We've seen it at Old Trafford today, Liverpool – could not get that second goal, and um, their one goal lead was eclipsed with um, a shock uh, back pass cut out by Bruno Fernandez and a wonderful goal from Kobe Mayno. And then they relied on um, a penalty from Mo Salah in the end. But we've seen the control that we had at Brighton under Mikel Arteta getting that second goal, Alonso. It just takes. Like you said, and you were talking about this earlier, the way Michael Arteta is now able to bring in fresh fresh legs around about 60 minutes, and we scored this goal in the 62nd minute, and one minute later we get substitutions, you know, for Bayern. Yeah, as you to go off, um, finally, and time to come on, um, and much really come on for Bukhara yeah. Saka. So, you know, sorry, it, on for Jesus. Yep. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, well, that was um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it, at the end of the day, you know, you can show, you can tell that Arteta is still, he's trusting his subs to um, make an impact, and they have so far, uh, especially well, this game at least, because you're seeing the you know, Chelsea score and goal, um, which mattered. So, you know, it's confident. I'm confident knowing that you know he can still um, make those changes necessary to make an impact and score a goal. And Trezor is like a super sub, so anytime you know he he comes on, you can tell he's a, he's going to be a threat. Yeah, exactly. Um, before we get into the Trossard goal, and you're right, we had those three uh, substitutions: Jesus coming off, Bakaya Saka coming off, and Sinchenko coming off. And we had the, the closers now, Trossard, Martinelli, and Tomiyasu. Right now, they seem to be the closers. But let's uh, stick a pin in this for a second and talk about this. BX said, are we cherry-picking anymore from rivals? Seems to be working these days. Yeah, I think we went and got um, Declan Rice for half the price. We should have really paid $200 million for Declan Rice. Sorry, West Ham, but, you know, we got him for 105. million. Um, Yuri and Timber is a player that we haven't. We're not, he's going to be like a new signing, Alonzo. When we do see him, we haven't seen hardly anything of Yuri and Timber. He's been, he's been like a new signing, like uh, our old friend uh, Abu Dhabi was. <laughs> yeah, well, we hope he doesn't have that injury track yeah. record now, you know what I mean? And then the controversial thing back in October or September was uh. Ramsdale being pushed out for David Raya. I think in hindsight, we've got to say all of those things have worked in our favor. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, you know, it's a shame that it hadn't worked out. Um, I think, you know, whenever you go from goalkeeper to goalkeeper, 
uh, you know, to get it to tell you it's just right, it's like, you know, I know Tony will, will come back to the stats and all that and say, oh, he's one of those people, we'll goalkeepers. But if you look at the, the saves he made for Arsenal, I uh, think back to the Leicester game, and there's a lot more saves against Renford. You know, he's a good, he's a good shot stopper. And uh, he makes all those pretty saves. Um, and to me, it seems like you know, he's maybe taught Raya some things as well uh, to save the ball and make those awesome saves as well. So uh, to me, it's like, you know, Ramsdale, this good did get, help us get to come fifth to second last year. Um, so, but Raya maybe just is better. Um, you know, you always question, the good thing about it is like, Whenever they came to Arsenal, uh, Ramsdale, both Ramsdale and Raya, they came from teams uh, that weren't high on the table, but then they became better as the year went on or years went on in Ramsdale's case. Uh, So, you know, it's funny because I was reading something that Ramsdale could still stay with Arsenal. Uh, So, you know what could happen. I mean... Player, players are now going to come to Arsenal because of um, they they know they're in with a chance of winning things, a real chance of winning trophies uh, in the coming years. We hopefully hopefully we start with a big one this season as well. This season is not over. Uh, here we are, first week of April, and we're getting down to the business end of the season, where we're a month away uh, from things being decided. Uh, in the next five weeks, uh, five or six weeks, everything will be decided, and uh, we also we also have maybe as many, almost as many league games as we have potentially Champions League games coming up. So we're going to play um, Bayern Munich. We'll talk about that in a moment. Hopefully, we get through those two games and get to this to a semi final. So imagine this: we, we've gotten um, a pretty decent. We we topped a pretty decent draw in our Champions League, so we've had not a bad run to where we are right now. We topped. We had a pretty decent group. We topped the group. We had a pretty decent draw with Porto. We saw them off, albeit with a one-one scoreline on aggregate and winning on penalties. David Rice uh, saving two of them, maybe three. Um, Potentially could have been a third one. And now we've got a Bayern Munich team that looks like it's very severely hurt and injured in their domestic season. Now we got to treat that with care, uh, but we still treat it with respect. But we can take that team down and uh, we can dispatch them without Harry Kane doing damage to us. Um, I think we need to destroy them already. Especially when Harry came. How's that? So we need to destroy Brian when you're not handing him with care. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> Harry Take came. Take a sledgehammer to it, right? Exactly. Not care and respect, Ray. <laughs> and this is um, this is a measure of revenge to all Arsenal fans who remember Arsenal in the Champions League of years gone past. I think I remember Mikel Arteta saying this is the first quarterfinal we've been in for 14 years. So 2010 was our last quarterfinal, Alonso. We played Barcelona, right? We played Barcelona, probably right? Bar- yeah, probably Barca. Uh, was that the one where um, the whistle the whistle went off and Percy scored? That, that was at their place. Yeah. Um, we were winning. We were on. We were winning that game on actually. I believe two one, two one from the first leg. Jack Wiltshire and Jack Andre Arshavin. Yeah, uh, Andre Arshavin. The Jack Wiltshire game. I think Fabregas scored a penalty, and then Arshavin scored the winner Wait, against did, Messi. So did, didn't Fabregas break his leg? Right, or broke his break his knee? Yeah. Yeah, like, he God, took man. that penalty. He took that penalty with it. You know, it's just so fortunate with Fabregas that he went on to Chelsea. In some ways, I blame Arsene Wenger for a few things that 
we degraded Arsenal so much that players had to leave and needed felt the need to leave us. You know what I mean? Um, and some people would say you can't say anything bad about Arsene Wenger, but I think there was a lack of ambition. Not maybe not at Arsene Wenger's feet, but at the club's feet. You know what I mean? Uh, we would get to a quarterfinal stage and have no have no feeling that we could progress, Alonso. But I feel make it's everything everything's different now. First of all, the chronicies, first of all, the chronicies have hundred percent control and uh Mikel Arteta is a, is ambitious and he's gotta be ambitious. I talk about the fogging standards, Alonzo. The fogging standards are to beat Man City in the league and to go out into Europe and do things as well. The fogging standards. The fogging standards. Yeah. A little right. bit more so, about yeah, go ahead. So the Carnegies, I, I think should take a lot of credit for building you know Arsenal. Um yeah. though it took, took time because it was them or I was runner uh, Usmanov, right? Usmanov. Um Usmanov. Alishar uh, Usmanov. Yeah, so you know, it was either this or two evils, but you know, I think the best thing that the Carnegies could have done was had you know Josh Josh run the ship, and he yeah. told uh, Daddy that you know, yeah, you know, I, I want to be in charge of Arsenal, um, and you you'll see him at the game sometimes. You see him out here in America. You, you, you see him talking to you know Arteta and, and the players. So, you know, at first, you know, they're, we were critical as fans to whether or not he was they were really serious about taking charge and, and take up, you know, after the takeover. And even as fans calling them out publicly. Um, so, you know, as a fan, you want to see that. You want to see your owner taking more responsibility and taking charge, you know, and, and being more, more in it uh, and, and, and not to, you know, not being able to be there when we need them, we need them the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, seven more wins now, please, with a healthy goal scored. We need to keep winning, but also we need to keep our goals, uh, goal difference healthy as well because we, we're level on points with Liverpool right now, and it's about goal difference is the only difference right now that is keeping us up there as well um yeah listen you talked about you wanted to mention kai Havertz with that assist as well alonzo because he didn't only score yesterday but he also assisted for trossard with that goal yeah and he's doing everything a shocker should do um and you know having a guy like that that is willing to be a playmaker uh with with even height as, as tall as kai Havertz is uh, he's able to do a lot of good things. And at first, you know, uh, we struggled or he struggled with trying to fit in and knowing whether or not what his best position is, whether it be an eight or, or, or a striker. But it's the little things that matter. Uh, and it was, all it took was just Odegaard, you know, giving him apparently against uh, Bournemouth, Bournemouth, right? Yeah. And ever since then, he's kind of, uh, slowly but surely, um, taking over uh, scoring yeah. goals, and now he's one of the, he's one of the he's, he's one of the leading you know, goal to assist contributions on our team uh, yeah. because he's taking that role and ran ran with it, whereas uh, Jesus hasn't and Kedia hasn't. So you're seeing yeah. uh, us Arsenal fans being more comfortable. Knowing that we're gonna get the best out of Kai Havertz, Waka Waka, Waka Waka, ah, Waka Waka, ah. No, that's, you gotta have, you gotta, you gotta be more enthusiastic, right? <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't get old, does it, Alonzo? It, it doesn't. Does not, but it does Gary hates it. But Gary can't stand it. Gary can't stand it. Okay, thanks for that. I will use it. I will use it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Gary. I didn't even throw you in the bus, why, but why does Gary not like it? Because it's catchy. <laughs> and uh, so I have to sing the angel to Tony and Stan and Waka Waka to Gary. Okay. Thanks. I'll, I'll remember that. It's all stored up here. So, look, uh, 
We played when we played on week fifteen. We played Wolverhampton Wanderers at home. I came out with, "We're going to win the league." I was so confident we were going to win the league, and the fear of no one. Now, that was early December when I came out with that week fifteen. We beat Wolves two one, and uh, I since I since had to have that sentiment tempered because we lost those two games to West Ham and Fulham. But um, I'm feeling a little bit more confident again that we can say we were the Christmas number one. We were not New Year's number one, but we are April. We're number one in April, baby. And uh, we are back on top of the league. And Liverpool have uh, shown a crack or two this, um, in this game against um, Manchester United. So Jurgen Klopp, not too happy. I'm here for that. I love it. Uh, we are going to win the league. Fear no one. You got to believe it. You know, I'm going to start saying it again because I believe it. Um, well, you have to have respect for Man City and what they do uh, on the field. I'll, I will caveat that by saying. So, Alonzo, I, I personally would have started with Bikaya Saka, Kai Havertz, and Leandro Trossard on the left. And those are the three players, funny enough, that scored. Hmm. How about that? Yeah, and to me, you know, like I said before, um, I've been quite critical of Gabriel Jesus. Yes. Um, he's now known for just going to ground. Um, and, you know, he, I don't know who will argue that, you know, he's only just helped us get to second place last year, but he was hurt majority of the time. Um, maybe mentality and training, um, but who knows, but, I personally don't see it out of uh, himself and Zinchenko. Um, they're just has at this. They're just has at this point of their careers at Arsenal. Um, I'd be more than okay to sell them next 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 summer or this summer because they to me can't hold a position. They can't hold a spot on the team. The reason why Arteta has chosen to start both of them is a rotation. And Martinelli getting back on the team. Yeah. Other than that, I don't really see them back next year. I, um, I, yeah, I agree. And, Gabriel, J- Gabriel Jesus is on because of Martinelli being not quite ready. You know. Yeah, and so to me, that's kind of discouraging that we had Jesus on the bench, um, and he's just that good to where. Uh, he's good as a substitute, but I think he could do more yeah. uh, if he's just started on the team. Um, but yeah, I, I, like I said, Ray, I, I don't really see a future for both of them next year. As we've gone past that echelon now, where wow, I, I I agree with you, but I I think they may stay in the squad for another season and help us in a Champions League context, a league squad context, and the domestic cups where I th- what I'm saying, Alonso, is I think there are players like Eddie and Kedia, Reese Nelson, and some other players who can who will probably move on before Gabriel Jesus and Sinchenko do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we probably keep them for another year, I would think, you know. But tell me a little bit about um, right at the end, we have Trossard and Gabriel Megale celebrating uh, a defensive block that we're keeping the clean sheet. And that just speaks, you can see how close the squad is fighting for each other, how much they want to keep a clean sheet and how much they're into um, not conceding a goal. Yeah. And, like, like we talked about before, I, I think the celebration, the celebration police will think otherwise. But you know, clean sheets. Two years ago, three years ago, even a year ago, were a struggle for us this late in the season. Um, so I don't mind that at all. I think it's really pretty cool. Um, keeping a clean sheet with a talent that is now in the Premier League, you can get a shot off at any given moment, but. I think they're so concentrated, uh, Sleba and Gabriel Mangalash, and even the back four, that they're so focused that even a clean sheet 
but even in goal scored will make them upset. And you saw it with Ben White getting mad at Zinchenko that one time when he didn't switch on and the goal yeah. scored. And on the first, and, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they take great pride in that. And this is why I think Zinchenko doesn't even be on the team anymore, other than just a squad player. Mm -hmm. Kiryu has done a great job there. Yes. As well as Hamiyasu, like you said before, they're both defensive-minded fullbacks or yeah. center backs, per se. Yeah. I know. I know. Tony would say, "Well, you know, uh, Kiryu is a defensive midfielder." <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, they're, they're both defensive-minded yeah, players. Yeah. 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 Hundred percent. Uh, listen, he, I just want to re reiterate what I said earlier in the podcast and let this sink in to those of you who are live or watching back again. In the calendar of 2024, Arsenal have conceded just four goals. City have conceded 10 and Liverpool have conceded 12. And that's almost in 11, 11 or 12 games that they have done that. So City have been dropping, have been leaky at the back. Liverpool have been a little bit more leaky as well. And so this is why they did not pass the eye test for me, Liverpool. Anyway, um, the City, I think City could get distracted with this Real Madrid uh, fixture coming up. I don't want to minimize what Arsenal have to do with Bayern Munich, but I do believe Real Madrid is a tougher proposition for City than Bayern Munich will be for Arsenal. So we might have a slight advantage over City in that respect you know what i mean i think city city could have real trouble getting past real madrid um and i hope arsenal are able to take care of Bayern pretty well uh steven said at this point of his career i try and talk uh jesus into being a backup for the front line exactly he can play all three positions he'll do we really need a striker now we've scored more goals than anyone in the league and we've now scored 75 goals this season. I'd, I'd really like goals to be set, like I said, for Bakai Saka to hit 20. But I would like the team to hit 100 in the league as well. That would be nice if we scored another 25 goals in these seven games to come. I mean, it's it would be a push knowing we have to go to Old Trafford and go to um, White Hart Lane and go to Wolves. But Another 25 goals just so we could hit uh, the Centurions in terms of goals scored would be nice. Um, so I think, Alonzo, just to finish up on Brighton, we have some real Goliaths in our team. And um, we've mentioned Gabriel Megalej as being one of them. He's one of those who, yes, we've criticized him. I've criticized him last season as well, as you have. We criticized him last season. You can see. And if anything, you can see that Gabriel Megalesh has gotten better this season and Saliba has been as solid as he was last season. Like Saliba has almost been that standard solid defender, but Gabriel Megalesh has like gone up levels from last season. Well, I think Ray also, you know, remember that Saliba felt really bad about being injured last year. So I think that really pushes him to even be better. And, you know, he too has, I think, gone levels um, other than you know, Gabriel Megalash, and they complement each other so well. It's hard to compare the two, but also they still have the same. They want to push each other, and that's what you want to see as an Arsenal fan. Because we haven't had that in a long time since we haven't had a solid partnership since Kashoni and Metro Soccer. Um, and you could say if Metro Soccer weren't, well, they did their, they did their best mm -hmm. with those two. Yeah. And, but they weren't really in contention for Premier League up until the 2016 17 season. <clears throat> but that said, I, I think right now you have a pretty solid partnership. And both Megalash and Saliba. Uh, and to for them to play every game, it seems like they have played every game, right? Yeah, I think they would have played every game pretty much. I can't remember a game 
where they have not been. Oh, the, Ash, the first game, yeah, the first game of the season, whenever. Uh, Gabriel, yeah, that, yeah, first that. couple of games where, you, you know, you said we were winning 2-1 and 1-0. Uh, we beat Forrest 2-1, and then we beat uh, Crystal Palace 1-0. So, yeah, without Gabriel Magalhães, we were just getting by in the first few games. Yeah, so, you know, you had a talk with him going to Saudi Arabia. Um, but, you know, I think at the end of the day, you know, that, that's how best the pits are pairing. And as the, as the year went on, they only gotten better. And so, you know, just like, you know, they played Partey at right back. It didn't work. And, you know, Ben White, to be fair, he did his best at center back. But I think now he's just been doing his best at, at the right back position. Um, so all in all, right, you know, it's been quite pleasant sight to see. Um, yeah, so I'm happy. Yeah. Um, just looking at the table, um, uh, Tottenham did, did beat, uh, Forest 3-1. Uh, Sheffield United drew with Chelsea, which was a, you know, I've, I've seen Sheffield United really, really trying to apply themselves and get themselves out of trouble. I think they're going to beat someone down the line, but um, a two to draw for Sheffield United, and we are top of the league. Says Moss. Indeed, we are top of the league. Back, back where we belong, Moss, and back where we uh, need to be. Manchester United now eleven points behind Aston Villa and Tottenham on sixty points. So it's kind of hard to see Manchester United closing that gap and getting into the top five conversation, if indeed. The top five will be Champions League qualifiers. Uh, we need Aston Villa to compete with Tottenham to try and get that fourth place because Aston Villa will play Liverpool. I, I'm doing a lot of these permutations, Alonso, where I need West Ham and I need uh, Aston Villa to be involved in um, in trying to be competitive toward the end of the season because you're going to get to a point where somebody's teams are going to be on the beach soon. You know what I mean? They're thinking about their holidays uh, with two or three games to go after a tough season. Um, Steven said, the reason I question getting a new striker is it will alter how we play. Right now, the defenders don't know where the ball is going, but a striker will be feeding the ball in his direction too much. Yeah, I definitely question the striker. What we could change it to a forward. Let's find a player who could play across the front line, who could play three positions, left, right, or central, a little bit like the way Liverpool used to play with Sadio Mane and um, Mo Salah. I think Liverpool honestly have missed um, Sadio Mane in the last couple of seasons. They've tried to fill in the blanks, fill plug the holes with Darwin Nunez and um, Luis Diaz. And they're decent players, but they're just not going to be the best standard. Let's let's have it right. Luis Diaz was going to go to Tottenham before he went to Liverpool. So that's kind of the level we're talking about. Uh, what, what do you think, uh, Alonso, in terms of the striker? I do like the look of Gikaras. Uh, from Sporting Lisbon, I think it is. Uh, right. I, to me, there's a lot of talk about Ivan Tony. There's a lot of talk about Ali Watkins. There's a lot of talk about yeah. Frankie. Yeah. Um, the other ones I don't know about because, again, I don't really watch yeah. football other than yeah. Arsenal. Yeah. Um, so, you know, me neither. So, <laughs> we're so players. Um, her English born, like Ramsdale, like Rich Nelson, like in Kenya. Any of players that are going to be English born uh, because we had to match that quota about how many homegrown players we can have on our, our, our team. So we got to somehow figure out the balance between either assigning an English born player or a player that is from somewhere else. So that's also not a concern, but the curiosity how we'll how Arsenal will handle that moving forward. Uh, so those are the only names I really know about. Mm -hmm. But Ollie Watkins right now is on fire. Um, so Avin Tony also has a lot of talent as well. And Slanky, kind of an, uh, 
Gomez, if he's talking about Arsenal, he's only he's only gonna get better, I think, because Arteta has a knack for working with players that can use a stepping stone, and like Kai Havertz, he's gotten him to play better. So there's that dynamic, dynamic too. Um, so though I do trust, I do to make the decisions yep. necessary to make this team better. Yep. And and uh, identifying the correct players to bring them in. I think we've been done we did really well with that in the uh, in the summer. Uh hand, hands up, I mean I'll put my hand up, Kai Havertz. Well you know we he came with the Chelsea stink and Chelsea right now are in mid table and can't beat Sheffield United. You know, as Stan says, they've got several hundred million uh, pound players and they can't seem to make it right. They've got Pochettino there who looks like he is, um, <laughs> you know, uh, in above his head a little bit when it comes to that. Um, so, yeah, Bukayo Saka interviewed yesterday. He said, last season we learned our lesson. And I think you've seen it in a lot of sports teams, a lot of sports stories down through the years that you have to have a painful defeat. You have to lose a championship in some way to understand how you're going to deal with the emotions the next time around and how you're going to beat it. Uh, we are still um, in this thing. It's still a fight. We are leading the fight now. It's in our hands. But we have Liverpool and Man City behind us now. And it's going to be – they talk about the league being a marathon. It's going to be a bit of a sprint now till the end, and we need to keep those two at bay as well. Let's not forget exactly, Stephen, we are waiting for Martinelli to enter his into his season, and he really loves Arsenal. He cares about Arsenal, but Kayak Saka loves Arsenal, cares about Arsenal. Erdegaard's career has been resurrected by Arsenal, so these are the players who are driving us forward. Um you look at all of the players and they all want the best things for the club and for the fans, and they're doing it for us right now. Let's not forget Marinelli has underperformed most of the season because slow build-up play. Havertz at left eight was not good. Changing partners on the left side and injuries. Next year, he will get 10 more. Definitely. We we, we should look to Marinelli to contribute four or five goals by the end of the season as well. All right, Alonzo, we'll get out of here in about 10 or 15 minutes. A um, couple of other things to cover, Alonzo. Um, moving from the the uh, Premier League now where we're top of the league and uh, we need to continue winning, obviously, the seven games remaining in the league. But now we shift focus. We'll have Aston Villa come in here next Sunday at the Emirates. But we shift focus to, I think it's Tuesday. Uh, we have Bayern Munich coming in, and um, in the Bundesliga, they've just they just lost a game as well. They've lost two games on the spin in the Bundesliga, leaving Granit Xhaka with with the path to victory in the Bundesliga and winning that trophy uh, for Leverkusen. We should we have a great chance to beat Bayern Munich on Tuesday and set us up for this uh, quarterfinal. Yeah, you know, um, I guess before we shouldn't really. Bayern Munich has historically been really good in this competition. They won before, um, but this is a different Bayern Munich team. Of course, you had that baller, you know, Harry Kane on there, um, and you have Eric Dyer, which they two aren't very really good um, when it comes to this competition. Um, so you know. I'm, I'm almost sure that Arteta is going to feel a strong team. Uh, he has to take this this thing seriously now. Um, but you know, like there are no away fans able to go in the stadium, so we got to use that to our advantage, to their advantage yes. as well. Yes. Um, so all things considered, you know, they're not at the best at buying as we're witnessing right now. So they have to hammer it, and they have to really do some damage and look at the past and use that as inspiration and motivation as well. Yeah, we we uh, you know as Arsenal fans we we're reminded of our European history, and it's not it's not 
uh, hugely successful. We've won a couple of cups here and there. We haven't done a lot in a quarter of, in the last quarter of a century since 1993. And in the Champions League, we were continually getting to quarterfinals and last 16. We have a great opportunity, as I outlined earlier, uh, getting the topping the group, which was not hugely um, competitive, and getting past Porto, which you would say was one of the better draws. And now we have a great opportunity to get past what looks like a traditional team that's always there in Bayern Munich. And look, they made it difficult for uh, Man City last season, but they are really struggling and Arsenal are on an upward trajectory. So like you said, Alonso, we just need to take care of business, uh, take a two or three goal advantage, whatever we can do. Um, There is no away goals in this format in this year. So it's really about, taking the two two or three goal lead and not having to play into extra time. If you take a two goal lead, lead to, to Bayern, it's pretty good, but you don't want to lose two nil out there then and go into extra time on foreign soil and penalties again. So we got to be careful. It, treat it like it's an away goal situation and not concede against Bayern Munich on Tuesday. Yeah. You know. Um, all right. So one last thing I wanted to mention. That's We'll talk about real. We'll talk about Bayern Munich on Thursday night. Um, one last thing I want to talk about is traditional top six and how they seem to be favored. There's a perception out there, Alonso, that the top six are favored in the Premier League. Here's my theory. I've got a theory on this one, okay? Not only is the top six... Uh, attractive in terms of they're the teams that the best players want to play for. Like, let's say a Paqueta at West Ham. We all know he wants to go to a, a Man City or he wants to go to a better team. So continually, these teams who have more money will get the better players. But I feel also when it comes to the referees and the officiating, they, the bigger teams and the bigger ties get the better referees. And you have a situation where Wolverhampton Wanderers were done out of a equalizing goal because of a maybe an inexperience or a lower referee, you know? Yeah, I mean, I don't buy it, right? I think, you know, top six should be able just to play football and deal with that because – you know, they're paid to play a game, right? They're paid to not be much superior, but get the calls. I mean, the referee has a job to do, right? To call the game. Now, mm-hmm. yeah, right. I got to go, man. This race is killing me, dude. <laughs> Just give me an update. What's going on with Truex? So he's holding back to eight now. <laughs> I can tell. I just saw your uh, – I'm so over this pit crew. The pit crew have messed them up a little bit, right? Yeah, because the guy was in first, and it shouldn't be All like right. that because he was in eighth, and it just – it gets why, so why just real quick, why do we put ourselves through this stress? We enjoy the victories, right, Alonzo? But yeah, but when things, are not mm-hmm. going, when things are not going well, it's stressful, right? You know? All right, get out yeah. of here, Alonzo. I'll close out the show. Thank you yeah, for being sorry, here for a couple hours. Take care. Yeah, all right, pal. See you, man. Sorry. <laughs> I think that's funny because, you know, these are the things that we enjoy doing, watching sports. But we do pick teams. I mean, some of them are grandfathered into us, like the Philadelphia Flyers, Philadelphia Eagles. Alonzo and I both follow those. Flyers, and, and my, Flyers they, need, they need to grab that God. last spot, don't they, Alonzo? Yeah, but they're choking. And yeah, they're choking. You, know, you can make the excuse that they're young, but at the end of the day, it's, 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 just, it's, just, it's just, they're just too young, right? They had no aggression on that team that they have them out. You know, right. they're always hurt. Yeah. The Flyers always hurt. You can't depend on him, so. Something like five games left, right? Four or five games left. 
four games now. Yeah. And are they, but, they are they still holding on to that last spot, or they have already yeah, lost? Yeah, because the Capitals and and the, the Capitals yeah. lost, and I think Red Wings lost. Okay. All right, but that that is a young team, and they're 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 feeling the pressure a little bit. This is what we do. We follow our teams, you know, like the Eagles as well. They 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 faded out of the um, the reckoning and for the Super Bowl, they were they were ten and one at one point, and I think they used um, Hurts too much in that fourth and one situations. He got hurt. And it wasn't the same. Now we've brought in Saquon Barkley. Did you hear that, Gary? We brought in Saquon Barkley. And uh, that that should take the heat off of Hurts uh, for this next for next season. But you got to wait. As Eagle fans, they have to wait another year. Uh, Arsenal fans, we have waited. We have waited long enough. And it's going to be 20 years. And I think it's a good time for the narrative to be Arsenal winning the league for the first time in 20 years. Forget about the four Pete. Forget about Jurgen Klopp and making him happy. I don't care about that, despite what you, some of you think. I am not a Liverpool fan. I am not <laughs> a Liverpool fan. Uh, <laughs> so Arsenal doing it for the first time in 20 years. We are here for that. We are top of the league. Say we are top of the league. Uh, we move, Alonso. We move forward. Um, we have beasts in our team and we're playing a brand of football that arguably, and maybe we can talk about it Thursday night, arguably we could be better than the Invincibles. This team could be better than the Invincibles. Well, yeah. I mean, but the competition raises is, is just so, it's, it's tough. It's gone up um, a level. Yeah, and that's why I don't think no team will ever, will ever go or, or, or ever go invincible oh, because yeah. the yeah. standards is, is just so high now. You know, yeah. um, talk about you know the coaching is better, players are better, um, the money is there, right? So you got to compete with that as well. So right. there's always really challenges. Um, injuries are now happening as well. So there's a lot that you could argue that things are. Better, but also harder as well, as yeah. you said. <laughs> yeah, so listen, maybe we'll have that conversation. Alonzo, uh, good luck with the race. Martin Truex, hopefully he can overcome the difficulties that I think that he's having right now. <clears throat> um, Arsenal have overcome the difficulties that they had. In... Nice segue, Ray. Hmm? Nice segue. Nice segue. <laughs> I'm the king of segues. Uh, Arsenal have overcome their difficulties at the beginning of the year, losing to West Ham and Fulham, but it seems like a long time ago that that happened. Uh, now we have rival fans clinging on to the hopes that we're going to drop the points that Liverpool dropped. Um, City fans um, doing what they're going to do. Let's let's uh, we'll talk on Thursday night, Alonso. Thank you for joining me. Thank you everybody for watching as well. Um, our our season goes on. Our story goes on. And we are top of the league right now and going to a quarterfinal against Harry Kane, uh, Eric Dyer, and their Bayern Munich uh, teammates. Take care, everyone. Uh, this was the Arsenal Fan Circle. You were watching Ray and Alonso. And we just had a pretty good weekend with results. Take care, everyone. We're out of here. See you Thursday. Come on, you gooders. Against Bayern Munich, let's kill him three now.